Hi there, Toy here, and is it too late to talk about maize? <laughs> so it's pretty obvious that it is literally almost July, and I still haven't posted my May reviews. And real quick before I get into that, the reason why is because I just haven't been in the right mindset to record a video. And if you hear some strange noises in the background, it's either my air conditioner or my dog. So uh, needless to say, um, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And between COVID and Black Lives Matter and the normal things that you have to deal with in life, um, plus um, my dog is very sick. So I, I just have had a lot going on and it's not easy to get in front of the camera and be happy or positive or all that jazz when you're when you're coping with a lot so that's why it took me so long to record this i am still coping and processing like everyone else but i thought i should do this before recording my video for june next week <laughs> so um Let's look at what I read in the month of May. <laughs> so first up is Grumpy Old Gods Volume 1 and I gave it an overall rating of 4 stars. Here is yet another series I'm reading out of order, but anthology series can be read in any order. <laughs> For me, the first installment of the Grumpy Old God series was very entertaining, but it didn't blow my mind the way the first one I read was, which was the uh, third installment. Near the start of, the, of my reading experience, I wondered if this installment had the specific theme of trickster gods, because many of the stories included some form of a trickster god. By the time I got near the end of the collection, I felt there was more variety and edge to the stories, and I was hooked once again. If I had read this one first, I would definitely have been interested in reading more in this series. Honestly, there wasn't one story in the collection I wouldn't have given an, an individual rating of at least four stars. Still, here are my standouts that I would give five stars to. Zeus Really Needs to Go by Sean Clement. The New Chief Medical Executive by Tom Zetter, and Wither Athena by Marshall J. Moore. Highly recommended to fans of humor, short stories, and mythology. Next up is Creating Character Arcs, The Mathical Author's Guide, dot, dot, dot. It's a long title. <laughs> um, my actual rating is 4.25. This book was really good. From a writer's point of view, the information within these pages is invaluable. From the reader's perspective, I have a few small issues that kept me from loving it. Despite that, I will definitely read this book again and use it as a reference moving forward. So, as a reader and writer, I try to take both perspectives into consideration when reading nonfiction. As a reader, I expect to be entertained and educated at the same time, but perhaps I expect too much. Still, don't let me paint the wrong picture for you. This book was not boring in any way. For me, it lacked entertainment value in the fact that the author never really gets personal with her delivery. It would have been nice to see some of the author's tips and tricks put into practice using her own work as examples. I've read a few writing books now where the author has done this and it's made all the difference for me. I really appreciated the in-depth, the depth and variety of examples provided to clearly explain the various steps to creating certain types of character arcs, but I felt like a few more examples of what not to do could have been helpful too. Being an extreme planner myself, I have no idea how pantsers get through their first pages, let alone whole novels. Still, I think a few mentions and or tips specifically for pantsers would have been nice too, but of course now I just sound like I'm whining. My next issue may sound a bit strange and that's because it is. I know this author is female, but for some reason I kept feeling a male voice while I was reading it. Again. 
This may sound stereotypical and just bad on my part, but I think that not making the book more personal took away from the author's own feminine voice. With that said, her voice isn't critical to appreciate the knowledge and experience conveyed in this book. If I was simply a reader who wanted to know about how writers create their stories and characters, I think I would enjoy the knowledge to be gained from this book, but it might feel like reading a textbook, which isn't a bad thing. I will definitely recommend this book to other writers. Up next, Save the Ocean by Bethany Stahl, rating 4.0. This is a cute conservation story about a mermaid and her turtle friend Agwe trying to eat some jellyfish and encountering plastic bags instead. Kalisha, the mermaid, breaks the fourth wall to ask the reader to help clean up the ocean by using the three R's, as taught in school, to reduce the used recycle. While the book is cute, the illustrations are bright and inviting, the read aloud video is what really sells this story, and there's a link for it on YouTube that I'll include in the description. I think the message of this book would be more profound if Kalisha and Agwe could have interacted with the people, with the land people, and some of the and some images of people actually helping to clean the ocean were included. Still, overall, this is a light and fun read. There is a cute search and find activity at the end that really highlights the gorgeous illustration. For me, it was a plus to see a black mermaid. I like that the color of the mermaid's skin had nothing to do with the story and message at all. That's just who she is. Recommended for an adult who wants to start an environmental conversation with a kid or for any kids wanting something to read um, that's short and sweet at story time. Next is Actus for Hearts by Russell Nolte, rating 4.0. This was a fun prequel to the Pixie Dust series. It was nice to see Acta before she became the one feared by so many. This story has a more tween feel than the first story released. The story is short and sweet, maybe a little too short, but that's the sign that it's good. I really enjoyed it. Recommend it to fans of fairies, pixies, irreverent fantasies, and works of Russell Nolte. Next up, A Quick Bite by Patricia Joseph, writing 5.0. This is one of the most interesting paranormal slash dark fantasy books I've read in a while. This collection of short stories, and I mean short as in 200 words, packs a lot of punch. This collection takes the central preacher theme, focusing on vampires, werewolves, and zombies, and blends it with elements of mystery, romance, humor, and more. While there are some humorous moments, overall, this feels like a very serious read. Not to be taken too seriously, but to get the reader really thinking about perceptions and expectations, what any good fiction should do. Kudos to the author for putting so much depth into so few words. This is very entertaining. Highly recommended to fans of paranormal, dark fantasy, creatures, and short stories. And the last book that I read in May was Pride by E.B. the Boy. Rating is 5.0. I really liked this book. Not all retellings hit the mark, but this one does it for me. So quick segue. <laughs> If you don't know what this book is about, it's a retelling of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, given a modern twist and placed in a more urban environment. Back to the review. First of all, I love the cover. That chocolate brown, almost metallic looking cover with intricate etchings and the two main characters facing each other really caught my eye. The spade printed Pride across the elegant background is a delightful indicator of the culture class featured throughout the story. I love the interspersed poetry throughout the book. It really helped to connect the narrator and main character, Yuri, on another level. At the beginning of the story, I didn't like her very much, but I also didn't dislike her. I was skeptical of her thoughts and opinions, seeming very narrow and one-sided, but reading her poetry 
and watching her grow as a character was a major part of the overall appeal of this story. I felt sad for Jenny and Ansley most of the book, one for being not strong enough to fight and the other for just sitting back and waiting for things to right themselves. I'm sure there was a lesson there somewhere, but I missed it. I just wanted those two to do more about their situation. As for Zuri and Darius, it took most of the book watching them both evolve for me to see how there could possibly be any romance there beyond physical attraction. In some ways, I'm still not sure what really brings these two characters together. It all seems very circumstantial. I guess in hindsight, there's nothing wrong with a story about a first love or a first infatuation. I see this as one of those relationships that happens so that when they do find the ones they are meant to be with, they'll be mentally prepared to take part in a mature and caring long-term commitment. Then again, I may be overthinking it. YA is not my usual read and I sometimes miss the points. Despite not seeing where this ship is going, I did like the way the characters interacted in the end. It was nice. Overall, the cultural issues addressed in this book are great for starting conversations about race, but I do wish more had been said or addressed about why the Darcy's moved to the hood in the first place. I feel like the author missed an opportunity there, but at least she mentioned it in it all. Not too many people want to address that, but for me, it's the part that really hit home. And it was so minor. Segue. So I'm not going to say what it is. I would rather you just kind of read the book and find out for yourself. But once you, if you do read the book and you find out why the Darcy's had to move, maybe you'll be like me and wonder like why that particular subject wasn't kind of hit on more or maybe you'll just be like okay that's it said and done we'll have to see back to the review i love the way the benitez family is depicted they don't have a lot of advantages but they have more love than most people will ever experience in their lives i highly recommend this book to fans of contemporary retellings and fans of culturally significant stories so that's what I read in May. Um, <laughs> I plan to do another uh, video for my June reviews, hopefully next week. You won't have to wait an entire month. Um, I'm in a little bit of a better place, still coping. So, you know, send me your thoughts and prayers. Let me know what you've been reading. And um, that's all I have for now. Bye-bye. And there's Margie. Hey. <laughs> Margie. Margie. Come here. Come here, honey. Come here. No? Okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Water break. <sighs> this story was more has more of a teen tween. <laughs> Let me back that up. <laughs> <laughs> Help to connect the narrator to the main character Zuri on another level. On the <laughs> I'm gonna try that again. I see this as one of those relationships that helps. <laughs> They'll be mentally prepared to take part in a mature and caring commitment. <laughs> I'm gonna get this. Hold on.